everybody tonight. So this week our focus has been escaping negative bottom positions. We differentiate bottom positions into positive bottom positions, AKA guard, and then everything else being negative bottom positions. If you're not in guard, you're in a negative bottom position. So that said, we were looking at the side mount and the side side mount on Tuesday because those are different positions, right? They serve totally different purposes. The main escape that we were utilizing was our frame and hip escape. The frame and hip escape is your bread and butter escape from all negative bottom positions. And that follows with our concept for escaping. Our primary escape concept is to create a frame between you and your opponent's body or to access a lever on their body, mobilize your hips, and then get back to guard. With the side mount, our top priority was not allowing them to get the cross face. Like we mentioned on Tuesday, if you only remember one thing from that lesson, let it be block the cross face. If I forget everything else, just never let people cross face me and I'm gonna be able to escape in some way. The second they get the cross face, now it's an uphill battle. So the uh, two escapes that we went over was first from the side mount. Our partner was loose, they were coming in to get the cross face. We created our initial structure here with creating a good frame on the bicep, checking the hip with our right knee to avoid the pop up. I bridge into them, I hip escape away, I slot my knee in between the two of us. As soon as I'm here, I can start to straighten my angle to get back to open guard or simply hip escape to come back to seated guard. We use that knee to block their hip. That's gonna be essential for today's lesson. But then we also did our side side mount. The side side mount is where he maybe feels that I'm going for this uh, escape. So instead of allowing me to start to escape, he simply drops his hips and creates a cage around my hips here. My frame and hip escape will no longer work because there's a tight frame on my left hip preventing me from hip escaping. So we access the lever on the far side. We used the pendulum to come up to the far side elbow and we used our hip escape to get up. Okay, so we're gonna continue this sort of uh, conceptual journey through escapes with the knee on belly today. And then we'll talk a little bit about the knee ride as well. So we'll kind of have two different positions similar to what we did on Tuesday. So first, let's make sure we're all clear on what the knee on belly is about. So if coach is on his back real quick, so there's a lot of different ways to do the knee on belly. The most traditional way that you'll see is where people take their shin and they place their shin on your belly here. They're on their ball of their foot with this foot. They have a kickstand, and then their hands can be in a bunch of different positions. The main thing though, is that my knee is the thing that's going to pin you down. Similar to guard passing, when we're escaping, we're always trying to block the thing that's gonna pin us down. In the case of the side mount, that was the cross face. In the case of the knee on belly, we need to adjust the knee. Now thankfully, when the people, the people, when people have their foot on the floor like this, some of their weight is on their foot. So it's not gonna be that heavy of a knee on belly. We'll talk about what to do when they actually have the knee, and even worse, they're hooking onto our hip, trying to drive our knees away from us next with the knee ride. But for, again, for right now, we're just gonna start off shin on the belly, ball of the foot on the floor, kickstand out at a 45. This post is matching his force vector, so as he drives into me, I'm able to adjust this frame depending on how we move. So let's escape from this position first. Our frame and hip escape is still gonna be the go-to. Okay, so we'll flip it up top and bottom. I'm gonna demonstrate our frame and hip escape against the knee on belly first, and then we'll break it down. Here we go. And I get back to an open guard, or again, a seated guard, depending on what I wanna play and how far away I can move. So first, let's talk about the frames. Thankfully, our series of events are gonna be identical to the side mount. We're gonna create a frame, we're going to bridge, and then we're gonna mobilize our hips. So instead of trying to block the cross face, I'm gonna be blocking and framing against his knees. I actually do not want to try to reach up for the cross face. If we remember our alignment principle, base posture structure, I wanna to try to build those options up on myself while pulling those things away from him. So if I give up my structure reaching for this cross face, I him lever control. He can then use that to start attacking arm bars and making my life pretty bad. So proper structure for our frames. I'm gonna take my left forearm and I'm gonna dig it underneath his knee here. My right hand is going to cup underneath his opposite knee. We can go for a C grip or you can use the bottom of the palm like this. Either option works fine, guys. If he has the gi, you can always grab the gi too. No gi, we'll just be here. I never, never, never wanna put my hand on his knee like this. This creates a ratchet lever that he can gain access to and start pulling me in. He can attack spinning arm bars, kimuras, and a lot of nasty stuff. 
So I always use my forearm. I don't even want to use my hand and keep my elbow tucked because that still is going to be really easy for him to dig in there. So we use the forearm here. Additionally, by using my forearm, I can dig it underneath that knee to create a platform that his knee is actually resting on. So instead of his knee resting on me, his knee is resting on my forearm here. Again, I'm framing this opposite leg to prevent him from driving into me. Now, my right knee is still checking his hip, similar to what we were doing with our side mount escape. But in this situation, my right knee is going to help in driving him forward with the bridge. If he comes back down to the side mount, the purpose of our knee in the side mount was if he goes to pop up to knee on belly, we use that knee to defend against the knee on belly. He's already in the knee on belly, however, which means that that right knee is going to help us bump him forward. My left foot is going to bridge into him. As I do that, I'm not trying to push him off of me. Again, that's never going to actually happen. You're not going to do that to someone good. So as I bridge, I'm trying to use my frame to keep his body weight up as I remove my body weight out from underneath him. My frames are maintaining this regulated tension here to just kind of hold him up in the air. And that is going to buy me time to, again, slot that knee in and start working back to an open guard. What we don't want to do is we don't want to settle our hips back down in between the bridge and the hip escape, meaning I get to this position, I hit a good bridge, and then I put my hips down, and then I try to hip escape your window of opportunity has now been shut. As soon as I hit this bridge, from this bridge position, I hip escape out. And I might need to do two or three hip escapes. As soon as I hit that initial hip escape, my left hand, which is using the forearm to frame, can now start framing on his thigh. I can build to the elbow, hip escape out to seated guard, or depending on your uh, preference, just right to an open guard, like we did on Tuesday. Okay. So from a different perspective, Allow your uh, partner to get to knee on belly. First, get your frames. This is the most important part, guys. I don't want to put my hand on his knee ever. Even if you think, it's OK, I can keep my elbow really tight. No, you can't. I'll get in there, right? Just keep your forearm here instead. This is just universally a better position to have your arm. My right hand underneath his knee, grabbing the pants, that's totally fine either way. My right knee is going to be checking right behind his butt. Again, like we talked about on Tuesday, don't do this silly thing. OK, even if he's in knee on belly, he can still access this leg as a lever and start to drive your hips away. And now you're in a lot of trouble. OK, keep these levers separate. I, if I offer him lever control of any kind, then he's just going to take that. Never offer your opponent lever control on your body. Once I'm here, I'm driving off my toes. I bridge into him. I hip escape away from this bridge position as my guard slots in and I get back to an open guard or seated guard, depending on your preference. I'll show it again without talking. And of course, once you're back to guard, you can start setting up your offense. And don't let them pass. And don't make that mistake in the future, right? Remember, this all starts with guard retention. The fact that you're in this position means that your guard isn't good. So you got to work on your guard retention. And to get that piece better, thou. You'll never have anyone knee on belly to start with. OK, guys? So uh, I'll pantomime real quick, and then we'll get to it, all right? So from this position, my partner's over on this side. I'm keeping that knee, checking their hip. Right forearm blocks the knee. I'm trying to dig that forearm underneath their kneecap. Right hand is blocking. Driving off my left toes, I come up on that shoulder. As I hip escape, I'm maintaining these frames. I'm not trying to push them off of me. I'm simply moving my body away from the frames. My knee slots in between. Here's our knee elbow connection like we always talk about for guard retention. Now that I have the knee elbow connection, I start making my micro adjustments to get back to guard. Cool. So this is, again, your bread and butter. And then we'll look at our lever escape versus the knee ride. Any questions? Does anyone need to see it again? Sweet. One, two. Cool, looking good. So that's our bread and butter escape against just like a generic knee on belly. But now we're going to talk a little bit more about the knee ride. So if you're unfamiliar with the knee ride, the knee ride is the position where our opponent is not spreading their weight out, meaning they're going to keep all their weight on top of our belly. And they're going to be hiding the foot by hooking it onto our hip. Their goal is to move their foot all the way to the end of the lever and turn your body in two separate directions. Okay? We talked on Tuesday about preventative measures when it comes to escaping. Just like with defending the cross face, we need to not let this happen at all to start with.
So the second we feel our partner's foot hooking on our butt cheek here, that's when we need to escape, okay? So for this particular escape, guys, we're gonna be forcing them into quarter guard, all right? And then we can do a bunch of different stuff from there, but that's gonna be our top priority, is just get back to quarter guard. So we're gonna be using some lever control now. So again, we'll be bottom position here. He's gonna start knee on belly, but they're hooking on my hip right here, okay? He's not gonna go all the way to a full on knee ride where he's twisting me in two directions. He's just hooking here. And again, I've noticed, aha, that foot's on my hip. Meaning his weight is now fully on me. His foot's no longer on the ground. His center of gravity is directly above me. So I need to move, okay? I have bad news. This escape requires a little bit of ab strength because you need to be able to hold somebody on top of your abdominal muscles for a tiny bit of time, okay? So just do your best, guys. If this isn't one that you can do comfortably, that's okay. We'll keep working at it. All right, guys, but I'm going to start off. Same thing. I'm creating a frame right here underneath his knee. I'm going to exchange my frame on his knee here to get down and control his ankle. I'm just going to grab his foot however I can. Now, we're going to start off the exact same way. I'm going to bump with my knee, bridge, but I'm not looking to hip escape at this point. I'm looking to simply feed his foot in between my knees. As soon as I feed his foot in between my knees, I can start hugging his knee here, turning in. We can start building up, wrestling on top, things like this. But for, for our purposes, guys, let's just focus on getting to that clamp around the foot, quarter guard. You can just push back to half guard, whatever you may know. But let's again focus on just getting that foot in between our knees. So top priority, this knee not being as heavy. Don't use the hand. Remember, we're using our forearm to frame. I'm not going to be framing on this leg anymore. I'm going to be reaching down and grabbing his foot. Because his foot is floating, let's rotate here. Because his foot is floating and it's not on the floor, this is now a lever. When his foot is flat on the ground here, this is a frame because he has connection to the floor. So because this is a lever, I'm going to be able to access this. But I need to get a center of gravity moving just like we did before. So I bump with my knee, I bridge. As soon as I do this, I'm just going to be pushing this foot right in between my legs. The leg that he is hooking onto must go straight. If it doesn't go straight, I simply can't push his foot in between my knees. So the leg that he's hooking onto must go straight. I push his foot, and I gobble it up. If you know how to do deep half, you can enter into deep half from here. But again, as long as you get into this position, you've escaped the on belly. Cool. So again, once we get here, you've escaped. I would just recommend this. Once you're here, pinch the knees, hug his knee, and turn and face him. From this position, it's really easy to just come up on your knees and start wrestling up. You can grab his far knee, put him down on his hip, stuff like that. Don't focus too much, though, on like the ending unless you're a higher belt. Focus right now on just getting into the quarter guard because that's the escape. As long as you put them in quarter guard, you're no longer in knee on belly. All right, so let's go through one more time. We'll do it from this way. Cool. Here we go. So he's here. I'm controlling the ankle. See, I'm still checking the knee, guys. This is not imperative. I was talking to one group. If you can't use the bridge while keeping that knee there, it's fine, right? I show a lot of details, but the concept is what you need to remember. In this case, we're accessing a lever to mobilize our hip and get back to guard. So if you can't get this little detail, it's fine. Just use it if you can. I bridge. Kick and feed, get into quarter guard. You can start coming up. If you get back exposure, you take the back, and whatever you want is free reign from there. Don't expect your partner to just sit there, though, in the quarter guard, <laughs> right? As soon as you sit and get to the quarter guard, don't expect them to just check you out and be like, nice, man. They're probably going to try passing at that point. So now is your time to start working your guard retention movements. So I'll show one more time. We'll go back over here without talking. Okay, again, I like coming up on the knees. That's just personal preference. You go wherever you feel comfortable. Okay, guys? With the knee on belly, guys, remember your, your knee should be on the center line. If you're on the top, your knee is on the center line for this one, not across. So I'm not gonna be here hooked on. I'm gonna be putting my knee almost right directly on his diaphragm here. Normally, we would be connecting ourselves to them, just so you know, but for now, be ready to post, because you're gonna be thrown. Would anyone like to see it again? Okay, cool. Let's give it a try. One, two. Okay, cool.
Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So first, I wanted to mention something that I that skipped my mind when we're doing that last lever escape. When I'm here, I get my frame and I'm controlling this leg. Make sure you guys are keeping your right forearm framing against the floor, right? I'm trying to prevent his foot from touching the ground. If my elbow is off the mat, now this is a lever, he could pull it, but I can also just put his foot back down on the floor and now make his leg heavy here again. So I'm using my right elbow as a frame to hold his foot up off the ground. Coach, put your foot on the floor. Not gonna be able to do it unless I let him do it, right? So once I'm in this position with these two frames active, my left forearm here and my right elbow here, his foot's going to be easy to feed in between my legs. So, knee on belly is a frustrating position, just like the side mount. They have a lot of commonality though. Almost, not always, but almost always, the side mount will lead to the knee on belly. Because when somebody passes your guard, especially in a competitive setting, they'll look to get to side mount, and then they'll do what we call pop up. Popping up is where they try to come up and they try to get to knee on belly. Why? Because they get two points if they do that. If he pops up, he just got two points. Now he can just come back down and just ride this position all day if he wants to. So we're going to talk later about pop-up defenses. So when they're in the act of popping up, there's stuff that we can do to defend and escape. Right? We'll save that for uh, Friday. But again, from this spot here, the primary concept for escaping any negative bottom position will again be I know I'm a broken record, but concepts are important. Create a frame or access a lever on your opponent's body, mobilize your hips, and get back to guard. Any negative bottom position, that's how you're going to escape it. All the little details, all the extra little pieces, all the get your leg here, put this hand there, those are all extras. If you only remember how, pr that primary concept, you can troubleshoot your own techniques that you learn and you'll see if whether or not it's efficient, right? Because efficiency is your top priority. Big rolling escapes, hyper, like, like throw them over, things like that, that works great, provided that you're bigger, provided that you're more experienced. Against an equally skilled guy, it's gonna be really, really difficult. Nine times out of 10, the most common escapes, you put them back in guard. And it's not just because I like guard. I know you guys are probably sitting there being like, well, yeah, this guy's just a dirty guard player. It's because that's the most efficient way to escape. It's very, very quick and easy, okay? So uh, we're gonna work on our top control drill next, guys, but let's get our water and mouth guards, and then we'll get right to it. Cool, does anyone have any questions? One, two.